Hello everybody, welcome to the Unicat channel. Today I have the real pleasure to introduce you to our new TC78 family suite vehicle. This is the first of five we are building now and uh, I really love it and I'm happy to have this one ready now to show it to you. We have installed this TC78 family suite body because of its length on a 6x6 chassis and as it's a family vehicle we have chosen a crew cab with five seats. This is a MAN TGS Series 2 with a 510 horsepower engine in Euro 6 emission standard. It has, of course, all-wheel drive, it has differential locks, uh, it has a semi-automatic transmission. Um, it's just a superb truck. And what we added to the chassis is a rear axle steering to improve the turning circle. Let me show you some features of the chassis. So, first of all, we have 16.00 tires, which are the biggest available for this uh, type of truck. We have central tire inflation system, and we have aluminum wheels, so we were able to install bead locks, and the, the, the aluminum rims, the two-piece aluminum rims, allow you to change wheels uh, by yourself in the field. Um, the wheelbase was extended from 4,500 to 4,650 millimeters and the axle spacing was changed from 1,400 millimeters to 1,500 millimeters. That was necessary because we have the big tires and we have the rear axle steering. So also here on the, on the right side we have uh, the entrance area for the rear door. Uh, which we have modified to fit uh, additional equipment behind and uh, to, to bring it to the same level as uh, other equipment on the body. So here we have the exhaust system, which is quite big on a Euro 6 uh, vehicle. Um, and then behind this panel, we have a 270 liter diesel fuel tank. Then we have the entrance area. The first rear axle, another storage area here, the steering third axle, and then we have a, a huge outside storage box uh, which actually contains uh, a barbecue. It's a nice unit. We have additional parts here. So we can make it quite a full outside kitchen. This one here. And then we have another basin that fits here. And we have that sizzler that fits on this side. So, um, yeah. It's a three flame uh, gas barbecue. It has a back burner, it has a sizzler, um, and uh, we have the LPG tanks next to it to provide um, LPG gas for, for weeks. Uh, we have hot and cold water, we have a basin here, and uh, we have uh, the water supply which also works as an outside shower. And also there is uh, AC power, so if you want to, uh, to put a motor on that barbecue.
So here at the back of the vehicle, we have uh, that slope to improve uh, the angle of uh, departure. We have a 16.0 spare tire or a complete spare wheel with a lifting system to lower it easily and lift it up again. What's also new and what we have installed the first time on this vehicle are our new air conditioning systems. Um, they are no longer on top of the vehicle. They don't need extra space inside the body uh, because they are at the outside here in this area where they don't disturb. So the vehicle doesn't get higher, um, which is very nice because we can fill up the whole area at the top with solar panels. And uh, there is another technical detail on these air conditioners. They work directly on 24 volt. So we take the power from the battery and run the compressor and the fans and everything directly. So the consumption is lower and we don't need huge inverters to make AC from DC to run air conditioner. So it's very direct, it's uh, straightforward and uh, a nice, very nice system. Here on the left side of the vehicle, we have also modified the entrance area to fit the AdBlue tank behind it. We have the battery box here, we have the air intake, and uh, then uh, we have another 600 liter fuel tank here on this side, which gives us a total volume of uh, 870 liters. Um, we also have that small extra storage area here and uh, we have another big storage area here for tools, table, chairs, whatever you want to use outside. So here at the front we have uh, those massive shackles uh, to tie down the vehicle when you transport it by ship or when you want to pull out somebody from, from the mud. Um, we have um, a roof rack with uh, very bright, super quality LED lights for wide beam and for high beam. And we have a, a lot of space on the roof rack it's a huge platform, it's about 2.3 by 2 meters, so more than 4 square meters, which you can use to store additional equipment. Now let me show you the inside of the TC78 family suite body. The, as the name says, the body is 7.8 meters long, 2.53 meters wide, and the inside height is 2.25 meters. So it's a quite big body, but it's built for a family of five people. And so you need five beds, you need a lot of storage, you need a proper kitchen and we can accommodate all that in this model. So as always in Terra Cross vehicles we have the seating area in the front and then we have the master bedroom in the back which I would like to show you as a first detail. Here in 
the master bedroom, we have a double bed of 1.8 by 2 meters, which is king size. We have storages on the left and on the right side. Um, we have hanger cupboards, which are really big. And um, so we have a lot of storage for clothes in this master bedroom. And we also have quite huge windows. We also have a separate air conditioner here in the master bedroom, which is separate from the air conditioner for the living room. The body is actually separated in three rooms, so to say. So we have the master bedroom in the back, which is closable by this door. And we have a middle section, which is, can be closed by the sliding door here. And then in the front, we have seating area and the kitchen. But let's talk about this middle section. On this side here, we have three bunk beds. Each bunk bed is uh, 750 millimeters wide and 2 meters long and in the foot area you always have another cupboard for storage, your, some personal stuff. Um, you have a water heater so you can adjust your temperature individually. Um, you have windows which can be opened and uh, you have reading lights and you have USB connectors. To access the middle bed and the upper bed, we have built ladders which fit exactly here. They are connected at the bottom and at the top. You can remove them, you can put them in any position you want. Um, and you can also just take it out in case the kid that sleeps here just wants to jump into the bed. So the lower bunk bed is quite close to the floor but uh, if you have a small baby then it's quite nice because uh, if it would fall out of the bed it doesn't hurt itself. Um, all these windows uh, have blinds and they have mosquito nets but to save space we have made them in a different way with magnets and um, so they can easily be removed and uh, also on this lower bed for a baby, we have uh, removed the handles. So this window can't be opened right now, but later when the kid is larger, then uh, we can uh, put the handles and it's a normal opening window. A three bed configuration um, the upper bed and the middle bed can be folded down to create a huge open storage in case you need that space for something else or maybe also to create a play area for the kids uh, so then it's it's much higher if that bed comes down uh, or if that bed comes down we also built a two bed version of the TC78 in case you only need two bunk beds. Then of course there is extra storage under the lower bed which is then higher about on this level and then the second bed is about on this level. So there is way more headroom um, but I mean this is already comfortable with only two beds. We have more storage and, um, uh, and more headroom. Talking about storage for the kids, here on the opposite side we have three big drawers, um, one for each kid and then here we have another very deep storage uh, to hang clothes or with shelves to store clothes equipment and this is probably more for, for toys and, and personal stuff. Also part of that middle section 
is the shower and the bathroom. Shower and bathroom are kept completely separate because if you are traveling with five people, it's better to have two separate rooms so you are going through much faster in the morning or in the evening. Let me show you the bathroom first. So here in the bathroom, we have a wash basin and above the wash basin, we have a mirror cabinet uh, with a lot of storage because it's pretty high. And we also have some storage underneath the uh, wash table. And of course, we have a porcelain toilet and uh, here behind this door we have the shower and the shower has a Korean floor uh, with a slope and with a drain and uh, you can also see a, a, a radiator which is also a towel dryer and then we also have another storage in this area to store towels to to store your washing things. Um, that was just a remaining space behind the fridge and, and we made it very useful this way. Um, there is a roof hatch in the shower. Beside the roof hatch, uh, we also have a push-pull ventilation system in the shower so that brings out the humidity um, but it keeps the heat inside because it has heat exchangers on both sides very nice system so and finally when your kids went to bed are sleeping then you can have some privacy in the front area by closing the sliding door. Here in the front section, we have the kitchen appliances. So we have a huge fridge here. Um, we have also a big deep freezer. We have a drawer here, just to use the space. And then we have another uh, cupboard here for more storage. And then here we have a convection oven with microwave or steamer, as you want, different models available. Then here we have a dishwasher. And last but not least, down here we have a Miele washer dryer and actually this one has 9 kilo of washing and 6 kilo of drying. So it's the biggest model available. Opposite of the appliances we have the kitchen. Um, we have a stainless steel sink. We have an induction cooker with a cover which also works as a tray and uh, here we have like usual we have our separations for cups and glasses and then we have a drawer for plates and wine glasses and of course also a drawer for pots and pans handles um, yeah all you need in the kitchen and as the kitchen is quite large there are four more drawers here the lowest one is um, for garbage cans and then these two are just uh, for provisions there are also hanger cupboards in the kitchen and they are also quite big uh, and this one here has a special use here is a coffee maker, a little bit high, I would say, but so. When you lower it, 
you can easily access it. You have a grinder, you have the coffee maker, and you can even use the wash basin at the same time. As we never want to use any space in the vehicle unused, uh, we have here a foldable kitchen countertop that increases the workspace in the kitchen by, I would say, almost 100%. And that's in the entrance area. Of course, it's collapsible uh, because you have to go in and out. But even the, the step box, the entrance area, can be used to stand here. So it's not a hole and it's, uh, it's very solid. So you can even be here. Somebody can help you in the kitchen. You can use this as a cutting board or as seen before, um, there is uh, the induction cooker. Uh, um, also above the entrance area, we have more storage. Here we have kind of a bookshelf. Uh, here's a tray which you can use for keys or for paper rolls and um, then uh, yeah, in the front we have our large seating area. The seating area in the front is in this case quite long and is, it's as wide as possible. Of course it's on a pedestal. Uh, because that allows us to install a lot of technology underneath um, and sitting so high is very nice and you still have enough space to have really big windows on the left and on the right side. The table can be turned to go in and out. Uh, we have tables that can slide and also this table here if you don't need so much space uh, let me remove this for a moment. Um, it's foldable. So this folds in here and locks in and you have a smaller table. Uh, still good for four people uh, or playing cards or sitting together in the evening with a glass of wine. Even so, the seating area and the seat pedestal are mainly used to install the technical equipment. We still have uh, shelves here in the entrance area uh, for shoes you want to use inside for small things like keys and so on and um, here on the opposite side we have another drawer accessible from the side probably also best use is for shoes for shoes and then we have even more storage here we have a TV cupboard with four big drawers and we have another drawer even here under the seating area. Now we have seen the living space and the comfort you have here. But there is also a lot of technology in the background that works for you. It all starts with a proper battery system. So here we have a 25.6 volt, um, 800 amp hour lithium battery system, which provides approximately 16 kilowatt hours of usable energy. We have inverters to run the appliances. Um, we have battery chargers which work on any voltage from 90 to 260, so they work just worldwide. Um, we have uh, some stuff that runs on, on 25 volt, which are the lights, the water pumps. Uh, we have the AC systems now running on DC from the batteries directly. And here is a controller and the air outlets uh, for the cold air for the living room and we have a similar system in the master bedroom. And if you wish you can also have a third system uh, for the middle section with the bunk beds. As typical for Unicat vehicles we also have a warm water central heating system uh, which has an output of 9 kilowatt 
but uh, you have to see that when you go to a high altitude like 4000 meters or higher um, then the the power of the heater goes down to about 6 kilowatt which is still plenty for this size of body and of course we have an adaption system so that the heater still works in that high altitude and uh, connected to that heater are uh, several radiators you have seen radiators in the bathroom and in the shower there is also a radiator in the master bedroom there is a bed heating so there is a warm water heating underneath the mattress um, there is a heating here in the living room um, and there is also heating um, in the rear outside storage there are more heaters for example the the drain area for the shower which is integrated into the floor has also a water heater and also uh, the entrance step box which is uh, outside of the body somehow um, has its own radiator to keep it warm and dry One of our later developments also is to have the drains of the black water and uh, the grey water which you can control from the driver's cab or from the control panel here. They are also water heated. They are built from aluminium like a, like a, a cylinder head of an, of an engine where there are channels where we run hot water through. So, um, very efficient system, uh, not easy to build, but it works even at really, really low, low temperatures. Uh, here in the, in the left part of the seating area, we have two separate water tanks with two pumps, uh, which contain 560 liters of fresh water. Um, but we also have two additional tanks in the rear, uh, in the slope area so in total we have more than 1000 liters of fresh water to keep the water fresh all the time uh, we have installed here the first time a, a uv radiation system which is based on leds so it's not the glass um, which breaks easily uh, it's led so it it works for an expedition vehicle as this vehicle is for five people. We also increase the capacity of the grey water and the black water tank. Um, grey water typically is 20% volume of fresh water. So the grey water tank here is about 200 liters. We, we don't do like in a motorhome, uh, same size fresh water and grey water where often the problem is more to get rid of grey water than finding fresh water. In an expedition vehicle, it's the other way around. It's much harder to find good quality fresh water rather than dumping grey water. Um, also, the, the uh, toilet tank has been increased to about 200 liters of capacity. And uh, if you know that you need um, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 liter of flushing water per flush, uh, you can easily calculate how long uh, that tank will hold. Uh, typically, it's more than two weeks, even with five people. One special feature uh, which we have installed on this TC78 is a hydraulic subframe. So we can lift and lower the subframe um, to create more space uh, for the wheels and to uh, improve the angle of departure. Uh, but mostly it's used to level the vehicle when you're stationary. Uh, it can be controlled from the driver's cab, but it can also be controlled um, here from the body. And that switch is on the other side. Let me show you. So, as you can see here at the controller, uh, the bubble is not in the center, means we are not leveled. And to level us or to level the body, 
um, I can now lift the front of the body and you see how the bubble goes toward the center. Uh, and uh, I can also, now that was the wrong direction, if I go this way, now we are in the center. Uh, you see that same movement, for example, uh, when we, now I'm lowering again, and you see how the opening comes into the same position as uh, the passage in the driver's cab. Can go left, can go right. We can adjust it in all directions. So before we go for a ride, let me show you what we have installed in this driver's cab uh, beside the, the normal stuff that comes from MIN. Um, we can start here at the top. So uh, we have uh, uh, for, the, for the extra fuel, we have an indicator here for the, for the auxiliary tank and then um, here we have the control unit for the central tire inflation system. So here you can choose which tire pressure you want. Respectively, you choose whether you want to go with highway pressure, with uh, track pressure, with sand pressure, or super low for, for really uh, difficult situations. Then we have a GPS system and uh, brackets to hold the uh, mobile phones. Um, then here we have a few uh, switches uh, individually labeled. Uh, we get these uh, labels made for us so that it's very clear what it is. Uh, even so it's very special functions which you don't find in a truck normally. So here you have um, uh, you actuate the, the release valves for grey water and black water. Here you have a back eye camera which you can turn on manually while normally it only turns on when you go into reverse gear. Um, then um, this vehicle has that uh, hydraulic subframe where you can lift the vehicle in, in uh, several stages and which you can level from uh, the body uh, panel and here you have the switches so you go in off-road level one, off-road level two, off-road level three. Yeah. And when you want to bring it down again, you can go step by step or you turn them off uh, all at the same time. That's pretty much it. I mean, I think it's quite a lot and very, very useful functions uh, for off-road expedition vehicle. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we did here.
driving this truck is really a pleasure. I mean, it's not noisy, uh, it's powerful, uh, the view is very good because you're sitting so high. And here inside the cab, you have five air suspended seats with seat belts, seat heating and everything else. So it's really perfect to travel with your family. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just fun and uh, that's what it's built for. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it, please press the button and uh, hopefully see you again in the next video. Bye bye.